Right now on KCCI 8 News Close Up, fighting for change. Iowa is in the midst of a child care crisis, and there's an effort right now at the State House to help. Coming up, we talk to advocates on how bad the problem is and the work being done to create change. KCCI 8 News Close Up starts right now. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News Close Up. Well, thank you for joining us. A new formed child care task force will meet to address what some are calling a child care crisis in Iowa. Many parents are not going back to work because child care is simply too expensive. Governor Kim Reynolds launched the new task force to develop a strategy to address the shortage of affordable child care. KCCI's Cynthia Fodor spoke to one member of that task force and other advocates about ways Iowa can face this crisis. So, um, Jillian, where do we begin with the issue of child care right now? How urgent is the need, especially with the pandemic? Um, you have a lot of uh, moms and women in particular who have stayed at home who would like to get back to work, but the child care is, is just uh, too expensive. Yeah, I think that prior to the pandemic, we knew and many of us with the Iowa Child Care Coalition were working on the fact that Iowa had a child care crisis and then the pandemic happened. So prior to the COVID related issues, we already had 40 percent of the child care providers leaving the field in five years. And Iowa has a high percentage of working parents. So it's just really escalated the issue and brought it to light now that the child care system crumbled during COVID. And now we need to start to replenish the availability and the accessibility of child care and certainly the child care workforce because we just don't have enough. At the beginning of the session and even in the governor's uh, state of the state address back in January, child care was said to be a top priority uh, for this session. Um, how disappointed are you that a number of these bills that came to fruition do not seem to be advancing? So we took a survey a number of years ago, and child care is a bipartisan issue in Iowa. People think it should be um, taken care of, and we know that the attention needs to be played on it. We heard from legislators that they had not heard from the child care providers and families that child care was an issue that needed to be taken care of. And the Iowa Child Care Coalition took care of that. And we had outreach to all of our policymakers this year. So if they don't move bills along, they're not serving their constituents because we know that they heard from their public this year. And what were they hearing? They were hearing that there was not enough child care in Iowa, that there was a lack of quality care in Iowa, that families just cannot afford child care, and that we don't have a workforce to provide more child care in Iowa. So they heard all the main issues from several different people. They heard it over text. They had emails. They had phone calls. There's letters in the paper. So they really heard from their um, constituents this year on child care issues. So it seemed as if the House approved a, a number of uh, measures. Um, where do they stand right now? And are they stalled in the Senate or, or what's happening? Yes, um, the House did pass, uh, I think it was five bills total. Um, and they are currently stuck in the Senate, as we would say. A couple of the bills, one addressing the cliff effect, um, did meet the final deadline and then the one addressing provider rates did meet the final deadline um, however the, the senate has yet to take up those those bills and so um, we're not quite sure you know what is going on we're hoping that child care isn't getting lost in the politics of of you know just day-to-day -day politics that happen in 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 any given uh, legislature so uh, we still are trying to just uh, support the Senate and say, you know, you have lots of support to pass these bills. Uh, the House has passed them unanimously. Um, the business community is is begging uh, for some help also to get the uh, to get people back into the workforce. Uh, so we're, we're just not sure what why they're stalled. And Sheila, can you just talk about the legislation, the cliff effect? What does that mean? Yeah, it's currently a, um, a bill that will address uh, those. You hear stories all the time about how workers might not accept a raise 
um, because they're afraid that they'll go over the income um, level for receiving child care assistance. Uh, so a family might qualify to get help paying for their child care, but they have to meet a certain income level. And it's 145% of poverty um, in our state. We have a program called child care assistance, which allows them to um, take uh, take that pay raise now, right? And it's called the Child Care Plus program. This bill actually extends that um, a, a, a few percentage points. So um, from 225% of poverty to 250% of, of poverty. Uh, and so it'll help some families, uh, again, stay in the workforce and continue to keep rising on that ladder to hopefully someday not need child care assistance at all and be able to afford it without um, the child care assistance program. Well, still ahead on KCCI 8 News Close Up, we take a closer look at one bill already on the governor's desk to improve child care. They say when you come from a small town like us. Welcome back to KCCI 8 News Close Up. Child care continues to be a hot topic at the State House. KCCI Cynthia Fodor continues our conversation with advocates about addressing the problem in Iowa. And I believe, Sheila, one piece of legislation that has gone to the governor increases the number of children that can be watched in a home. Uh, what, is, what does that look like and how, if the governor signs it, how would that help? Sure. Um, that was one of the bills that the child care, our child care coalition kind of stayed away from. We agreed on some other bills, but didn't really take this bill up. Uh, there are several of us that think that it's it could, it could be helpful. It does go in. Um, it might allow for a non-registered provider to take another child. However, we really do believe that we need um, a skilled, qualified workforce, and that means that they might have to meet some basic registration guidelines, and, and the folks that would be eligible to take more kids wouldn't necessarily be meeting those guidelines. And Jillian might be able to actually even explain the need for, um, you know, some oversight of child care in general without, we don't want to put undue burdens on child care by any means, but we do want to maintain quality. I think just a couple points on that is increasing slots is not necessarily the issue to all of the child care in Iowa. It's the accessibility. So the proper child care, meaning high quality child care in a driving distance to parents or child care in home or center that meets the child's needs and high quality child care. Increasing slots um, does not support the workforce in child care. So we want to make sure that the strategies that Iowa uses really help with the quality and accessibility and affordability for parents. And we have a shortage of the child care workforce as the largest issue in Iowa. So the one bill that has made it through and 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 is on the governor's desk apparently is is not even one that you all were pushing for. True. And what we would say is all of the bills are important that we are supporting. 
you can't fix the child care issues in Iowa with one strategy. There's several different issues that we've pointed out and that are, you know, our parents have elevated and our child care workforce is elevated. So we do need multi-pronged solutions, but we don't need to deregulate. There aren't studies to support that deregulating increases the stability of child care. And I would also mention, Cynthia, I don't know if you had followed some stories, uh, some really tragic stories of the past couple of years, but we saw, you know, a handful of kids that unfortunately died at child care centers. And, and one of the things attributed to them was providers watching too many kids. Um, it's really uh, important that children from birth to five in particular um, have the kind of quality care that they need, not only for brain development, but also safety. So this is also a safety issue for our kids as well. If we can increase the child care, um, the, the pool of child care providers in our state, increase investments so that we can increase the quality, um, we'll be able to see more safe, quality and affordable options for parents and families. So do you have concerns about that bill then? Well, I in think- In terms of I, safety for children? Well, I think, and I can only sort of speak for Save the Children Action Network, and I'm sure Sheila has some specific opinions from, from Common Good Iowa, but we don't want any legislation that puts un, undue, one undue burden on childcare providers, um, but also we wanna make sure that children are safe. Um, and any, any sort of legislation that doesn't uh, adhere to quality standards um, is unfortunately a step backwards. Um, and so if there is an increase in slots in the child care center, um, there needs to be equal, um, equal standards uh, um, attributed to that. And, and, and so far, um, the legislation before uh, the governor doesn't necessarily um, address those concerns. And I would say as an Iowa Child Care Coalition, that was not one of the recommendations that we see from the public or from our coalition moving forward. So the energy that was spent on that could have been spent on things that we all recommended for bipartisan level solutions. And um, so Sheila, to just uh, wrap up the, the legislative end of this, um, are, are you, we're late in the session now. I mean, lawmakers are in overtime actually. Is there any hope uh, for any of these bills at this point still? Are you, are you pushing? Yeah, the House um, actually does have those, that language, bill language for both of those bills in their HHS budget. So the House is still saying this is still a priority for us. We've, we've made it a priority by putting it in our budget. Representative Joel Fry uh, and, and Representative Van Meyer have been real leaders on this, and um, we thank them, you know, wholeheartedly for their for pushing this. Um, however, you know, we come down to the Senate, who doesn't have those items in their HHS bill. So, you know, what the compromise is at the end, uh, we don't really know what what that will end up being. You, we do know also that you know the governor has her child care task force that is in place via executive order. Uh, lots of good work is happening via that task force. Uh, so we also are hearing that some they may not want to pass any legislation because they're waiting to to figure out what is in that task, what the task force recommendations might be. Our issue is that last year, remember the Iowa House and Senate said, or the legislators said, this is an issue for us. Childcare is an issue. Nothing happened. We did have, you know, the abbreviated session, and they had to come back in 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 June, and finish it. Well, now if they don't do anything this year, and the childcare recommendations that come or the recommendations that come from the task force may need legislation, so that would have to wait until next year. So we're really looking at nearly three years of a child care crisis that was identified, you know, uh, three years ago, even before that, of really nothing happening from our legislature. Uh, and so we, you know, we were hoping for some action uh, from them this year, in addition to whatever recommendations might come from the child care task force. The governor's going to be running for election um, in 2022. I'll, I'll um, you know, all signs point to her running again. And this is clearly something that she can run on is that she was able to address uh, child care needs, listen to constituents um, and provided not only real relief from the pandemic, but um, also worked on a structural uh, fix for um, long time inequities in the child care workforce and infrastructure for our parents and our providers. 
Coming up on Close Up, the deadline in place for the Child Care Task Force to come up with solutions to the crisis. KCCI 8 News this morning. Helping you. Welcome back. Governor Kim Reynolds has given her child care task force 100 days to come up with big, bold recommendations on how to fix the problem. KCCI Cynthia Fodor continues her talk with advocates. Jillian, you are on the new child care task force, correct? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm work go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm working on the workforce side of the task force. There are four strands. There's regulatory barriers and financing expanding the child care assistance that Sheila was mentioning earlier, the workforce, and then increasing employer investments. So um, I interviewed the Senate Minority Leader Zach Walls last week, and he said we don't need a child care task force. Um, what we need is legislation uh, is, is, is forming this task force, obviously, uh, what are the goals you just mentioned for them, but is it better? It's better than nothing. <laughs> so we appreciate the governor creating a task force. However, we did have the Iowa Child Care Coalition. We've made the bipartisan recommendations to alleviate some of the issues that we have identified for years in child care and specifically in Iowa. So we do appreciate that the focus of the governor is now on child care, but it doesn't mean anything without action without bills that are legislated and without money that is allocated. So childcare has been underfunded forever and it needs to be professionalized and it needs to have the funding and the support to go with those solutions. So it almost seems as if this task force then will take all those same ideas, maybe even make them a little better um, and work on them and come back next year and start all over again. Well, the governor's tasked us with 100 days to give big, bold solutions. And so it has added more minds to the pot of solutions, which is great. Um, but we need action. We need state funding to be allocated towards the solutions. Sheila, do you want to add anything to that? 
Well, I think my my comment would be that we do um, appreciate the federal government's role in this. Also, uh, the the amount of uh, money that has become available to states by the federal government as, as several relief packages for for child care. So they're acknowledging the need in states. However, the one thing that does come with the federal dollars are um, not real uh, commitment that we know of right now to sustainability. These are one-time funds uh, and one-time funds are great and it gives us gives us a shot in the arm. Uh, what we need then is to make sure that the state, like like Jillian said, allocates and, and supports whatever uh, recommendations might come from DHS, from this task force, if they use any of those federal dollars. Um, are those so federal I, you know, dollars? Are they available right now, or is that still part of um, the president's proposal? So there are three rounds of federal dollars, and we're on the second round being implemented right now to help child care. And so it's really unprecedented federal funding into child care um, right now for relief and recovery. But as Sheila said, not for sustainability of child care at this point in time. EJ, do you want to add anything? Just that voters are, you know, eager to see these substantive changes and they're very, you know, Save the Children Action Network volunteers as well as volunteers within the coalition are very used to engaging elected leaders on these issues. Um, child care was one of the key issues that we brought up during the presidential, um, during the presidential race and ended up being one of the big focus points of the Biden administration. We did actually see some, some changes, some movement forward in the Trump administration as well. Um, and we wanna continue to see that movement forward on the federal and state level. Um, and so advocates are standing ready to talk to our elected leaders and give them information about what they need in order to be successful either as a child care business or what families need in order to be able to get back to work. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're eager and ready to offer up uh, solutions to our federal and state delegations. I want to add in here that additionally, the lack of child care in Iowa is a huge economic impact issue. So Iowa leads the nation of working parents with children under six and also has very low in unemployment. So to keep people in Iowa, we have to have available child care. We have more people in the workforce than most other states. And we have a child care crisis and it's hitting our economy hugely. Our business folks really support these increases in quality, accessibility and affordability of child care and support making the child care workforce a professional workforce as well. Still ahead, the next steps for the task force as they continue to push for progress. Only your locally owned country.
Welcome back. KCCI's Cynthia Fodor wraps up our conversation with child care advocates. Is there any kind of effort in there? I just heard about this last night. I'm, I wasn't familiar with helping businesses as well um, set up their own child care centers or helping businesses help their employees. Yeah, so there's a lot of different business solution models going around. Iowa Women's Foundation has worked with several. So has Child Care Resource and Referral. And we're not always recommending that the business open a child care. There's several other solutions where they can support a child care center or a child care home with funding or with um, different things to help out or with their employees paying for child care. So we have several different solutions around the state as models, depending on the business, the side, the employees, and what their employee needs are. Okay, so what's the next step? You're going to... the the task force is getting to work now, right? And you have 100 days. And Sheila, you'll still be up at the state house for the next week or two. Uh, right. We to hope to do, yeah, we, we hope to do press and get some letters to the editor. We're hoping to, you know, have our, have our memberships uh, reach out to their uh, legislators and, and just, again, show that, this is a you know a safe vote for them. This is a good vote for them. People want them to address childcare, and so um, you know we're 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 needing them to take action and take action now and take action next year. It's one issue that people don't think about is that preschool is quality childcare, um, and the state defunded um, Iowa's preschool program by 7.4 million dollars in the um, in the, the the state's education budget. Um, which is going to place a lot of current quality providers um, in the red. Uh, and uh, they're still uncertain. The fix has not been passed by the legislature. There has not been a clear path to uh, address that funding shortage. Um, and we still have, uh, as my volunteer Kelly Donnelly constantly tells me, is that their, their child care center is writing their budget in crayon. And, um, and we need lawmakers to address um, not only the child care bills that are in front of them, but also fund preschool uh, because that is preschool is quality, affordable child care. And really the return on investments in our youngest Iowans are huge. If we look at economists, the return on investment of a high quality early learning environment saves in, in medical issues, incarceration, homelessness, dropout, and all of that too. So we've often tried and woven that in somewhere as well. And EJ, as you have pointed out before, just the development I, of the brain mm -hmm. uh, up until age five um, is, those are the primary years, correct? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that is that is a really important thing to mention. I mean, it's not just an economic um, issue. It's not just a business issue. It's not just a provider issue, but it's also a development issue. And we want to be able to set up our kids for success um, for years and years to come. And we can't do that unless we start early. Yeah. So that's why the, the legislature needs to invest in child care and preschool. Well, thank you for joining us for KCCI 8 News Close Up. We will see you back here same time next Sunday.